All right, I'm getting ready to uh, lay out the fabric and cut out the pattern. Uh, before I do that, let's talk about the pattern pieces first. Uh, so I have the front, the back, I have the pocket facing, I have the pocket binding, the gusset, the waistband, and then I have another front lining pattern piece. This is only going to be cut out of lining and no self fabric. Um, now I have two different fabrics here laid out. What I'm going to do for the main body of the swim trunk is I'm going to cut it out of the pink and for the waistband and for the pocket binding I'm actually going to cut it out of the white. Now I don't um, say on the pattern contrast um, or self, I just say everything is self, but of course you can play with color blocking as much as you want. Um, so let's talk about the notches just really quick. I have notches here on this front uh, pocket facing, which is actually going to be aligned here on top of the actual lining, and then it will be hidden um, behind the front. Um, I have a suggested stitching line here for the pocket depth, but of course you can change that for any um, shape that you want. You could opt to not even have the line and have the pocket go all the way down to the hem. Um, it's up to you, but I just put this line in here uh, for a suggestion. The other notches I want to talk about are on your waistband. <clears throat> the waistband is actually cut on a fold and this here is actually going to be the center back. I have a short a notch here a little bit away from the fold. That'll give us two notches signifying the back um, once we unfold it. The two notches here uh, that are close together actually uh, signify an opening and this is where we're going to insert the elastic and the drawstring when we get to that point. Seam allowances are one quarter inch all the way around with the exception of the hem is one half inch. So let's get this fabric laid out. So let's get this fabric laid out. So the back piece is actually cut on fold. So I'm actually going to unfold this exactly in half and let's have a look at what that looks like. So here I'm putting the back piece on the center fold. And then the other pieces that I need to have two of is my center front and then of course my uh, pocket facing. So I could cut it like this, but if I pull this back, you can see how much extra I have left over. So you could keep it that way and you'd have two separate pieces for other things that you want to make. But I'm actually going to cut the center back, uh, cut the back piece first so that I actually can save the most width of the fabric. I might actually be able to get part of a whole nother suit, depending on what you're making. So if I have anything that's only to be cut on the fold, I like to only fold over as much as I need for that folded fabric amount. I'll cut that out first and then I'll see, and then I'll continue folding for the double pieces that I need. This looks pretty good. And notice I'm not putting it all the way up here at the straight edge. That's up to you. Remember I have a quarter inch seam allowance here that's gonna go on here because I have a waistband that's going on here. So I'm not folding it over um, as a fold over elastic. And I have the notch here. So I wanna make sure I wanna cut that out. And I'm just going to make a little bit a wisp there and then come back into this. And I have a notch here. This is for the gusset. When I line the gusset up. Now you can either cut this notch out or you can just make this little slit. That's up to you, but make sure that you don't cut beyond the quarter inch. Uh, <clears throat>
Okay, and there is my back piece. So I do have some space here. For the gusset, I only need one to be cut, but it's still, I don't have the width, the length there. So I'm gonna continue to fold over. But I do have length for, for my, uh, my pocket facing. So I'm gonna fold this back over Lay that there, and I'm gonna be able to get my pocket facing out of that. And it looks this fabric is really slippery, so that's why the, the pattern likes to move around. But on uh, Lycra, um, swimwear fabric, I don't really like to use pins. Okay, so there I've got my pocket facings. And I'll cut this little extra off. So what are the other pieces that I need double of? I need my front, but not on the fold. So I'm gonna fold this over. Until I get two pieces, make sure that your greatest stretch is perpendicular to your fold edge. And will I be able to get this out of here? Just barely. But I only need one, so I don't need to cut it yet. my front pieces. Now I can unfold, do one layer, and I can get my gusset in here. That looks like a pretty straight edge, so I'm gonna, and it still aligns here with my grain line. And so what I have left is my lining and my waistband. So I'm gonna switch over to the white. Lay out my white on the fold, but I'm only gonna fold the amount that I need. And of course, again, if you trust your straight edge here, you can move it up there, but I like to move it a little bit away to make sure I'm getting that correct cut. So now these two notches here that are kind of in the middle of the waistband, this is for your side seam. So this is where you're going to match the waistband to the side seam of the swim trunk when you um, join the waistband to the trunk. So you can either cut those out or you can just make little slits. Yeah. 
can. And then I have two. And I have two uh, pocket binding it goes around the edge of it. And I'm gonna go that, I use this straight edge here. So now for the lining, there are three pieces that we need for the lining, and that's the separate lining full front piece. We need the gusset, and we need the back. And the back is cut on the fold. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to fold the fabric the width necessary for the front and the back, because I need a full piece for the back, and I need two of the fronts. Trying not to stretch the lining. Okay, everything is cut out now. So I have the back, the front, the gusset, the pocket facing, the full front lining piece, and the waistband and the pocket binding. So we're first actually gonna take care of the pocket binding, so let's get ready to do that. Okay, we're ready to put the binding onto the front pocket. So um, face sides out. So make sure you know which side is your face side. I believe this is the face side. And then what you're gonna take with your binding pieces is you're gonna actually fold wrong side to wrong side, so um, in half, so you see the face side. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to actually um, overlock this, and you'll have to stretch it a little bit around that edge. Now what I'm gonna do to this piece is I'm gonna fold this over and I'm actually gonna overlock this together first. And then I'm gonna actually overlock this to that edge. And then after that, we will fold it over we'll come back here, fold it over, and we're gonna use a zigzag stitch to top stitch all the way around. So I'm going to do all of that except the zigzag stitch at the overlock machine. So again, I'm gonna fold this in half, overlock it together, then I'm gonna overlock it to the pocket area.
Okay, so now I've got the uh, binding joined to the front pocket area. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to fold this out so I see the seam allowance. And then I'm going to fold the binding over on top of the seam allowance. And I'm going to pin it. Now, you don't have to pin it if you're good enough to actually just do this while you're in the machine um, on its own. Um, on your own, that's fine. I'm just going to pin it because it, it helps keep everything together. What we're going to do is we're going to run a zigzag top stitch right on top and that will hold the seam allowance underneath this binding. And I did not cut the, the lengths of my extra overlock thread because sometimes um, in the beginning um, you may need those to help you pull it through the sewing machine just at the beginning. Okay, and I believe I will have my zigzag stitch, which I'm going to sew here, set at a 44 millimeter width and a 4 millimeter length. All right, so now that we have our pocket binding done, we can set these aside. And the next step is going to be our um, pocket facing. And we will have the uh, front lining, which is the full lining. And then we have our pocket facing pieces. And you want to attach these, join these with the, the wrong side down, matching your notches on the side. And what you're gonna do is zigzag this on around this bottom portion. You can also baste here at these edges to keep it from flapping over. Now, <clears throat> I'm also going to overlock this curved edge. Um, and that's just kind of to keep uh, everything looking nice and flat. You do have an option of uh, interfacing the wrong side if you want a little bit more stability um, while it's being sewn onto the, the lining. That's up to you. If you do, I prefer Pellon EK130. It's the easy knit interfacing. Um, the reason I like that, it's a good, good knit. It stretches um, after you apply it. Just be careful when you apply it with heat that you actually cover the fabric with some sort of press cloth so that you're not melting the fabric. I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna just go ahead and overlock and stitch it to the lining and we'll see how that turns out. So you'll be able to judge whether or not you wanna have a little bit more stability on that. So again, the thing I'm going to do is overlock this edge and then I'm going to zigzag it down to the lining and then I'll probably baste stitch just here along the edges.
Okay, so now that we have the fronts ready, we can actually um, put them face side to face side. And um, here you have a couple options. Get these lined up here. So this is our center front. These are our center fronts here. And what I mean by options is you can sew each piece each piece along the center front and then uh, align them on top of each other or you can sew all layers together by putting your lining lining your center front lining with your center front self and then stitch all the way down here it doesn't really matter which which way you choose to do it of course if you sew both of them together the lining is, isn't going to move anywhere this front uh, center seam is is fairly short because we have a gusset going in here um, so I'm not really worried about it moving around so I'm actually going to sew the center front seams separately and then I will lay the lining on top of the self and probably just baste it along the side seam. Okay, I just want to um, mention one very important thing very quickly about when you sew your lining center fronts together. Um, you can see that I already sewed myself um, center fronts together and after I was thinking about it I needed to come back and explain something to you because I think that I had it, uh, the lining is folded over like this. When you sew it like this, um, we need to see this going against the front panel like that. But if I sew it the way I have these face sides together here, well, the, the front uh, pocket facings together here, then on the inside, we're going to have the seam. So when you sew the, the linings together, you actually need to see the pocket facings so that your seam will be visible and the pocket seam will be visible. Um, the pocket facing, I'm sorry, um, will be visible. So that when you put the two together, the seams will be encased together so that when you fold this open you will have uh, no seam it'll just be a seam um, but it will be encased in the front so I'm actually going to put these together like this and overlock these seams and I'm just gonna put a pin just so I remember okay Okay, so I've got my front lining already and my front garment. I'm going to open up my lining so I can see the pocket facings. And then I'm going to lay my front garment here. Remember this notch should be about the edge of where your binding is. So line these up to the edge and I'm going to pin them. I'm not gonna put a pin through the binding, that'll probably be too thick, but I'll just put one down here at the bottom and then I'll put a pin here on the side and do that here okay so now what I'm going to do is well actually let me pin up here too getting a little ahead of myself so I'm pinning the binding up here at the notch and the binding up here at the notch. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually definitely baste across here on the side seam to hold the garment um, to 
the lining as well as straight across here and this is kind of thick so in your machine depending on how strong your machine is you may need a little help um, and this is just to keep this here um, holding it to hold it down while we're gonna sew the back seam here and I also like to at least tack this if not base the whole front um, together with the lining as well so you have options of also basting down here where the hem is and along the gusset area. Now I know we do a lot, a lot of basting, but what that does is it keeps everything, um, the lining, everything together, especially um, on the front. Um, later on, those stitches can be pulled out or they can be popped. Um, that's just by pulling it and snapping the stitches. Um, it's what they do in the industry. Um, so there's, you can always pull out those basting stitches after you get everything sewn together. Okay, so now our front is all put together, the basting is done. And just a note, quick note about the basting. Um, you saw me point out the gusset area here going in two different directions. So I sewed from the center down to the hem and then I turned the fabric over and went from the center down to the hem. And the reason that I did that is so that if I sewed from here all the way around, then I might get an irregular stretch going this way. So what I did is I minimized the stretch by starting the center and going around. And I also did that with the hem. So I sewed one going this way to that way, and then I turned it over and did this way to that way. Um, in hindsight, I probably should have done the same thing on the side. Since I sewed the bottom up here to here, then I should have sewn the bottom from here to here. Um, but I don't see that I have anything too badly out of stretch. So now before we need to, we can work with um, putting the gusset in and the back, we actually need to define our pocket. And remember on the front pocket piece, I mean on the front um, piece, I have a dotted line that defines the pocket. Again, this is a suggestion. Um, you can define your pocket if you want it to be square. If you don't even want to define it, it will go all the way down to the hem and the gusset. Um, but I'm gonna actually follow my suggested line. I'll show you how I'm gonna do that. One note about the stitching, remember that if you are gonna be at the ocean or at the beach and you're gonna be in the water and you choose not to define your pocket, some sand may get in there and it's gonna go all the way down to the hem area. Um, I'm gonna sew my line with a straight stitch, about a medium sized straight stitch all the way around. And, well, you could do a zigzag. The reason I'm not doing a zigzag again, if you're gonna be anywhere it's gonna be sand, it might stay in the pocket and it might get in the crevices of the zigzag, which is really hard to get out. So that's why I'm doing a straight line. So how do I get it um, perfect on either side? So what I like to do, what I'm going to do with the pattern, is I'm actually gonna cut the pattern. I'm not gonna cut it off. I'm just gonna cut from about an inch or so inside to an inch 
um, to the end. So I'm gonna take my rotary, following the dotted line for my size. We'll stop about there. What that does is it opens this up so I can actually draw that line here. Now you could also shave a little bit off on this inside, um, on the upper side so you don't have to pull the paper away. And I'll show you what that looks like. I take the paper away. So there I have an opening where I can actually chalk my line or pin my line. So what I would do is I would lay this on top of here. Remember that you have a quarter inch seam allowances all the way around. So the, the bottom here is not hemmed yet, so I can lay this exactly on the bottom, edge to edge, and that should be give me um, pretty good placement. Again, there's quarter inch seam allowance here. And now I have this template, and I can mark right inside here. Now what do you mark with? You could just use pins and pin all the way around and then take your pins out as you sew, or you could use uh, several different types of marking. So I have chalk, this is actual dust chalk. I have wax chalk, and I have an erasable marking pen. Now when you're working with synthetic fabrics and you wanna get rid of those markings, there are a lot of things that you need to consider. Will the chalk totally, will you be able to brush it all the way? Since this is wax, if you're gonna use wax, when you um, use an iron to melt it away to d make it disappear, is it actually gonna go into the fiber? So remember, this is um, your synthetics are, are oil petroleum based. So anytime a wax will go on, it might go back into the fiber and it will stain it um, and it won't come out. So I haven't tried, this is a friction pen. It uh, is uh, erasable and it disappears with heat. So um, you may wanna test it on your fabric to make sure that it actually does go away. So I'm gonna do a test right here um, so you see what happens. So I'm gonna test this chalk first and make sure you're on the, the face side of your fabric. So if I'm marking this, what you're gonna to need to do is, is see if you can get the dust to go away. And it doesn't look like it's coming out. Now remember, there are different colors of this. So you have white, blue, red, yellow are the most common. Um, so if you, I scratch this, it doesn't look like it's really going away. You might be able to get it to go away if you have some water. I don't have some water with me right now, but I would test it. Okay, so I'm gonna test this wax, this white wax chalk. So I'm gonna make some lines here, and then it takes heat to make it go away. So I have my iron um, I'm gonna grab in a second. It's heated up, so before you try to make it disappear, use a piece of cotton or wool and place over your garment because you don't want to melt the garment and it only takes a second um, to get it to go away. It's almost gone. I'm not really keeping the iron on too long so it's not hurting my board either. They're almost gone. So it looks like they're gone. I can't, I mean, there is a little bit of a mark, but it doesn't look like it's leaving an oil mark. So what about this, uh, this pen? So I'm going to mark with this pen. Okay, you can see some black marks. Remember when you mark this, you only need a few marks just to get your um, the idea of where your line should be. And it looks like the black marks went completely away. You can still see a little bit, maybe not on camera, you can see. This. Okay, so I'm ready now. I know what marking instrument I'm gonna use to mark my pocket line the, pa the pattern up. I'm actually gonna put some weights down here so it doesn't really move that much. And I'm not gonna make a whole like long, I'm just gonna do a dotted, 
very faint. Dotted line around. You may or may not be able to see that on camera. I'm not sure yet. But there is dotted lines right here. This is my sewing line. So I'm gonna turn this over and I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. marked up and there's my stitching line and I'm actually because I can see, uh, stitch here follow that line all the way up to the top and I'll just kind of hold this up so hopefully closer view you can see where my stitching line is so I'm going to use about a medium stitch I'm not going to use a long basting stitch um, so I'm probably going to set it at three and a half to four millimeters Okay, so I have my pocket stitching done and now I'm going to actually remove my markings from the invisible uh, pen. So I thought I would protect my table this time with a, a Teflon pad. So pad, then the garment, and then I have uh, my piece of muslin. Now I'm not gonna keep the iron on here for very long. I'm just gonna go around the area um, that I have uh, marked on. And I'm probably just gonna use the tip of the iron. I'm not gonna put the whole thing on it. So I'm just gonna kinda go generally where it was here. There, that looks pretty good. A little bit more. Do the opposite side. All right, it's like everything is good. Turned out fine. Now we can start working with the back and the gusset. All right, so we're ready to work with the back and the gusset. So um, what I like to do for the back, both the back and the gusset, is to base stitch the lining to the garment. Make sure that you're basting the lining to the wrong side of, of the pieces. And again, to avoid overstretching, start at the center and then sew out. That way, if it does stretch, it will stretch evenly.
Okay, so now we're ready to um, attach our gusset to our back crotch. Um, but before we do that, we're gonna have to stretch the gusset into this area. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clip every so often, every two to three stitches so that we'll be able to stretch in there. Now I know that seems a little counterintuitive to the basting that we did, um, but it will still hold everything together. Sometimes when you're doing these hard curves and you have a lining and a self and a self and a lining, you um, sometimes miss um, a lining layer. So it will still hold everything together. So what I like to do is pin the notch to the notch of the center, the notch of the uh, gusset to the notch for the center back crotch. And then I'm just gonna pull this other end of the gusset over to the edge of the crotch, same matching at the hem. And the same on the other side. And now we will be able to stretch that in as we sew. All right, so now we have the gusset onto the back. And if you see any threads here still showing your basting, you can actually pull those out. I'm gonna wait till the very end to actually pull all those um, extra threads out. Um, so now we can actually join the gusset to the front or join the front to the gusset. So I'm actually going to lay out my front and we're gonna attach it here. And I've got the gusset here, but remember we pulled stitches, so I'm actually going to do the same thing here because we're gonna to need to stretch this into that, um, the front gusset area. And we're going to repeat the same process for matching the gusset to the front as we did for the back. So I'm matching my center notch to actually the center seam here. And then match up the edges. And I'm just quickly pinning this because we're I'm going to be removing the pins anyway when I sew. All right. And again, we're going to be stretching this in. Make sure that when you when you're sewing and whatever side you're you're sewing on, either this side or the gusset side, that you keep looking underneath the presser foot to make sure that you're actually getting all the layers in your stitch line. Okay. Okay, so now the gusset is attached to the front. Let's have a quick look at that. Again, these basting stitches here can be ripped out um, when we're finished. So now we need to do the side seams and we will fold this uh, face to face and we'll match up the side seams from the bottom to the top. 
and when you get to again here at the uh, binding this is kind of thick so you may need to help it through the machine a little bit um, so just be aware of um, what the power level is on your machine All right, so it's starting to actually look like a swim trunk now with everything pretty much together. We just have to put the waistband on, the elastic, and the hem. But before we get to the waistband, there's one thing that I kind of like to do. Because we have these pockets and we have this this binding, which um, once you start using it, may uh, create a lot of pull um, on the area here. We don't want the seam to pull out. So what I like to do is I like to, um, move the seam, press the seam toward the back, and I like to reinforce stitch right here on the back side. Not on the front side on the binding, but here back, holding that seam allowance and that heaviness here on the back side. That way, when it's pulled, it will actually have the strength of the seam instead of ripping away from it, okay? So I'll probably just pull out these stitches real quick on either side, and I'm gonna use my straight stitch, a medium length, and just back stitch, tack stitch, just in this area. All right, so uh, how about this waistband? So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna need to uh, sew this side, join this side together. And make sure you're, you're folding this widthwise, face sides together. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to sew a quarter inch seam from this notch here out to the end and then a quarter inch seam from this notch here out to the end. And we're gonna leave this part open. That's where we're gonna be inserting our elastic and our drawstring. So we're almost ready to uh, join the waistband to um, the trunk. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open where we sewed, and we're gonna try to bust these this little seam open like that, and then we'll fold it in half until these edges match. Okay, and then I'm just gonna put a pin across that. 
and if you can see this, now we have this opening here, all right? So then we'll fold the rest of it in half matching these notches, which they should. These double notches are for meeting at the back. The single notches are for your side seams. We're gonna match the seam that we sewed to the center front. All right, so that's pretty well um, done in half. So now this hole, remember, we want to go to the inside. We want it to be against um, your body. I suppose you could put it on the outside if you wanted to, um, but remember when you when this kind of slightly opens up, you might see the uh, elastic. But that you know it's it's not really an eyesore. Um, so anyway, this would be the face side of the uh, waistband. So we'll match that center seam to the center front. Okay, so I should see the opening because it's gonna be folded this way. Okay, I'm just gonna grab that pin from underneath and repin it here. And then what I can do is walk around the garment and match this notch to the side seam. Pull this out. I'm probably gonna have to readjust these pins for when I sew it. And then I'm going to match the double notches on the waist to the double notches on the waistband. And this waistband should fit almost exactly with the trunk. That's the way I designed it. And then the last notch to the side seam. So, so there's your sew line right across here. And one thing that you just may be aware of is that as you're sewing, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you catch all three layers. There should be two layers of the waistband and then the one layer of the trunk. So keep checking as you go along. Now, as I've done before, like we did with the binding, I overlocked it together. You could overlock this waistband together to keep everything um, nice and neat. However, when you do that, you'll end up cutting off the notches. So if you do that, you'll just have to divide the waistband into four equal parts and then actually pin it to um, the garment. But I've chosen to not do that. Okay, so let's do this elastic. So cut the length that you need. Um, and the seam allowances are included in the length um, on the pattern. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark off a half inch in from each of the cut edges. You can use a pencil, a pen. If you use dark ink and you have a white waistband like this, you won't wanna use a dark ink or you'll want something that's going to disappear when you wash it. This is so, um, these are our sew lines after we insert the elastic. All right. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna find a good size safety pin. If you use a small safety pin, it's probably gonna, hard, gonna be hard to uh, finger it through the, uh, the waistband. Um, so I should tell you that I'm using one and a quarter inch wide elastic and the elastic that I'm using is fairly heavy heavy it has um, it's like a medium weight it has a good give to it the previous elastic that I like to use for the underwear is a sport elastic and it's very soft 
um, but this one has a little bit more um, give to it. It's about a medium weight um, elastic. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually fold the cut edge and then I just kind of like to insert the um, safety pin like this. I don't like to put it only on the end because I worry that it will rip off. So I like to kind of insert it two different ways so it holds a little bit better. I'm gonna turn the suit inside out and I'm gonna find that hole, here's that hole. And then I'll insert and get that elastic all the way inside. And then what you're gonna do is just wiggle it all the way around until you come back to the other side. And this is the part of the video where I'm going to speed it up. Okay, so now that we have the elastic coming out on either side, it's together. What you're gonna need to do is just kind of feel through all the way around the waistband that you don't have any twists because we're actually going to sew um, the ends of the elastic together. I seem to be um, okay. So I'll remove the safety pin. And as you can see, this is actually um, pretty flat and I've got no twists in it. So we are going to actually overlap these so that there won't be any twists. Be careful that you don't do this because that will put a twist in it. If you sew it like this, then you're gonna have this seam that's in there. Even if you fold it back and stitch it down, it will be a thickness. So that's why I like to make a ring and line up those lines. So you get a ring so everything is even on the inside. And you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna pin it um, just so you can see that I'm being cautious here when I do this. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do now that I know that everything is flat on the inside, I will use a straight stitch and I'll stitch down my stitch line, but then also I'm going to actually stitch right here on the edge of the cut edge on either side. That will keep the, this from flapping around on the inside of the waistband. Okay, so now the elastic has been all stitched up, then we're gonna wiggle it, kind of pull it back in, wiggle it back into that hole. Kind of move the fabric around and then make sure that it doesn't twist back inside. And what I'll do is I'll usually just kind of push the fabric all the way around a little bit and that will be hidden. You can feel around where it, where it is. Now you can um, close up this hole after you put the drawstring. We can close up this hole if we want. I'm going to leave it open. We still have to put the drawstring in it. We're going to do that um, in just a minute because I want to do get the hem out of the way first. So first, I would like to overlock the edge of the, the hem opening. So let's do that and we'll be right back.
All right, so now we just need to turn up this hem one half inch. Right, if you need to measure, measure. I have, can kind of eye it. Now, of course, if you are experienced, you don't have to pin it up. You could just turn it as you sew. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna pin this so everybody can see what I'm doing. All right, so now all I need to do is zigzag around the edge, try to pass the needle right just past here on this edge so it covers this edge completely. And I'm gonna set my zigzag at uh, four, four millimeter width and four millimeter length. And the reason I'm doing that is because I have the zigzag here and I want the size to match this size. All right, so let's do this drawstring, and I have a couple options here. Um, I have some paracord here. This is about an eighth of an inch. Um, it's kind of too narrow for this waist, this wide waistband. I usually use this on um, the bikini styles where I'm turning over three quarters of an inch um, elastic waistband and then inserting this. Um, it has a smaller profile. So I'm not gonna use that today, but of course you could, you could use that. But understand that this does not stretch at all. Another option which I'm actually gonna be using today is this braided drawstring. It's a poly, poly cord, um, and you may recognize it if you've seen it in the craft section. They have some like this that is out of cotton. If you use the cotton, then you need to shrink it first before you put it into the swimsuit. Um, because as soon as the cotton gets wet, it's going to shrink. Um, if you can find this poly drawstring, um, it's one of the better things to use. You could also use, they also have a flat 
style that's a flat poly cording um, that's very similar to a shoelace. If a shoelace, a poly shoelace fits your waistband, you could also use that. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. Um, now, I don't give a suggestion for the drawstring in the pattern. I probably should have. Um, but basically what I cut is um, I add about 12 inches to the waistband. This is 32 inches, so I added 12 inches to that, to that, so that's 44. Um, so you want to have between four and six inches extra just so that the, um, when you open up the suit to get it on around your body, it doesn't all shrink up and go back inside the hole. Okay, so to get this started, I have my cut in and I'm going to tie a knot. I'm going to use the uh, large safety pin again. I'm going to open up and I'm going to pierce through the middle of that knot. I'm going to go ahead and turn the uh, suit inside out. And I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did for the elastic. Insert it through and then I'm going to wiggle it all the way through to the end. Be careful, watch your other end and make sure that as you're pulling it through, it doesn't get sucked into the hole again, otherwise you'll have to do it all over again. Okay, so when your um, drawstring comes back through the other side, you're gonna have to continue to pull it and then push the waistband all the way around until um, the other end starts um, to uh, get into the waistband. And we're gonna look for trying to get our drawstrings fairly even. Do a little bit more here. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to take the other end, I, you could do this beforehand, uh, tie, it, tie it in a knot, right? And then I can take the uh, safety pin out. Now on these two ends, since this is polyester, um, you could also take a lighter um, and just uh, cauterize these ends because they will melt. But be very careful, um, this is um, basically plastic. So if you, if you uh, fire it too long, it will drip, and if it drips on your hand, um, you will end up getting burnt and getting a scar. So be very, very careful. Um, so, but these shouldn't um, come undone from the knot. Tie this in a bow. All right, turn the suit inside out. <clears throat> and the last little bits of cleanup that you'll need to do is to pull out your stay stitches. Remember, we have stay stitches here on the uh, hem, and it will only uh, go so far. So you can either come in here and grab um, those little stitches. If you can't see where they are, just pull it and it will snap. I don't know if you can hear that, but I just pulled it a little bit and the uh, stay stitch um, snapped. And now this will actually expand fully, okay? So I'm gonna pull these stitches out and the stitches up here, those are my basting stitches. I'm not gonna actually do that on camera. But we have a finished suit now.